Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I'm Stephanie Maroka and I've been painting for about professionally for about 10 years. This is how I start very as, as little as like a few lines as possible but just to kind of have a guide and then I'm going to put a horizon line in here just a very light one so I have a guide then what I have to do is on certain paintings in certain areas I do what's called masking wherever the waxy part was touching remains that previous color in that case white and you do that over and over again so it's protecting whatever is underneath it so what I'm going to do now is wet the paper because it's watercolor so you need water right we're going to make it really wet the underlying colors in the universe for people are yellow red and blue, which are our primary colors. So I usually do a little underpainting with those colors. Watercolor doesn't wait. It does what it wants to do and it dries in its own way. So you do kind of have to work quickly to get the job done. And then you have to wait for it when it's ready, not when you're ready. I'm gonna have to, I gotta turn this up. I want it to have, have the heaviest color at the bottom, so we'll let it drip that way. When watercolor dries, it always dries lighter, so it's hard to know what it's really going to look like. It's just such a beast. I'm just going to put a little cloud in there. Okay, now I better get to that shoreline. I like 300 pound paper. It gives you a little more time when the paper is drying. You get more time because it's so thick it'll take longer to dry. I like it to be heavier because I have a little more time. And um, it doesn't ripple so much. Okay, so that, that looks doesn't look like a shoreline, but that's more of that underpainting I was talking about with the reds and the yellows. I think I better put some pine trees in now. Let's put a few pine trees in. I've been painting all my life. Um, ever since I was a child. And it's just something I've always aspired to do. So I'm lucky enough to be doing it, more or less. It's tough economic times right now. but people always need beautiful art to look at and make them feel happy. That's what I think. Inspiration comes at any moment. It's basically from just connections in my life that, you know, that we all have our experiences that we've had and sometimes, sometimes I just see something and put the connection together and I see a picture I want to paint. That's where it comes from. I have um, a lot of different experiences from where I learned to paint. I took some classes in college, but it was not my major. Uh, I've taken workshops from master painters I admire. You can always pick something up that way. So practicing, learning, talking to people, looked at books. But basically, for the most part, I am self-taught. Kind of put some shadows in. I'll put some birch trees in now. And the flat part of this brush can do a lot of different shapes. I'm going to take my little brush and do a few more of those 
um, pine trees. It's not too late. That chickadee's waiting and waiting. He's just gonna have to wait some more. The water is a big wash as well, like the sky. Have to get it all wet again. Here's where preserving the white of the paper is important because now I'm going to be going over it with this blue. I'm going to be going over the area I masked out. Yep, you can see this is lighter than when I put it on. Well, I think that's just fine. So. This is dark. I think it could be a little bluer. Of course, it's a reflection of the sky, so I'd like more of that cobalt, I guess. Cut out this little shoreline area. I'm now drawing, or I'm cutting out the branch, right, cutting right through the color before it dries completely. So I can make a little branch for him to sit on. Subtle under color. All right, now let's see if we can get some little cute little things. No, it's too too dark. Now we can take off this masking. And I have a little tool here that's a big piece of uh, piece of rubber, and it'll pick up I can just pull that right off. And I think I'll finish by doing his feathers and finishing the chickadee. I just want to soften it up underneath his chin. So I had a drawing. It's going like this. I still have masking on the, this part. I need to build up the twigs more. But this is the idea. I'm just gonna put a little dot of acrylic on his eye. Give him a sparkle. There it is. I would call this one bird's eye view, I guess. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas, Pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.